Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to our system webinar. It's great to see lots of familiar faces and some new names as well. It's great that you can join us today. Um, so the purpose of these webinars is really to enable you as system user to get to know all the functionalities of the Shadow Match system. I know we all fall into the same habit of using the same things over and over again, and some of the things are hidden, or we don't know that we can actually click on a specific button. So we have these system webinars once a month. We've had since the beginning of the year. So if you've missed some of them, please go back to your calendar. You'll find the calendar on the shadowmatch.com website or on shadowmatch.co.za under the events tab. And then the system webinar in every month will explain and will help you to understand some of the functionalities that's not widely used on the system on a day-to-day -day basis. So today we're going to specifically focus on the team functionality. I know some of you are quite familiar with the team functionality and some of you might not have used it in the past. So that's really our focus for today. My name's Lizette. I'll be the host. You have noticed that we are recording because this becomes part of our resources and the link to this YouTube or the link to this video, which we will load onto YouTube, will then be available on the events calendar by tomorrow morning. And you're welcome to share this link with anyone that you think might be interested in the team functionality or the team application on Shadow Match. I'm gonna, I'll handle the chat. So if you do have a comment or a question during the course of the of the explanation and the, the discussion, you're welcome to post your comment or your question in the chat. We will, however, also towards the end of the webinar enable your setting so that you can unmute your microphone and then you're welcome to ask your questions live. I'm now going to hand to Susani Conradi. She's the general manager at Shadow Match. Thank you very much, Susani. We're looking forward to the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Good day, everyone. It's the first Wednesday of the month. So we have system navigation and support webinar. I'm so excited to be here and thank you for joining in. Um, and thanks for those who are going to be work, uh, working through the recording. If you can't join in live now, that is why we recorded to accommodate everybody's diary. Um, so as always, we'll be working with fictitious data in a fictitious company, but it's on the live system. It would look exactly the same as when you would log into your own data. So please feel free to explore after today's session and play around with your own data to see if you can unlock the optimal value if, with your data. So as Lizette said, we'd be, we'll be focusing on a specific functionality today. So there's actually just one agenda point. It's the team functionality on Shadow Match. And you'll see as we work through this, why it's only one agenda point today, because there's so much value in this. And I don't want to rush through it. And then we, we might miss some of the, the things you might be interested in. So we'll take it step by step and we'll unpack everything as we go along. So let's share my screen. But you'll see I'm going to start sharing at the beginning. And what I mean by this is I'm starting at a personal shadow match result of an individual. So if you're familiar with the system, you would know this is the starting point of everything in the system. So you would send a worksheet invitation to an individual. They go through the complete shadow match worksheet. And at the end, you receive the individual's unique feedback. So what you see on the screen, this is the individual, Tanya, in this case, that is her unique habit intensities. It's shown in specific categories, all the way from planned behavior to radical habits, the different habits measured by the, the worksheet, everything from propensity to own through routine, discipline, altruism, everything you're familiar with. Now, this data is shown here in a bar graph view for the individual alone. So we're only looking at her results and it's in the format to see it like this, different bar graphs next to each other showing the unique intensities of each of the habits. And as you know, no good or bad, no right or wrong. This is the unique preference of an individual. So this can look in a million different ways. We have millions of people on the system and every result looks different. Now, what you can do on the, the system is you can ask the system to combine individual results in a collective view in the team functionality. So it's using these individual habits, the results of an individual to inform the graph that we are going to look at. You'll see the graph looks different. And it, if you've never clicked on it, you, you, you might not be familiar with it, but it actually is something very familiar if you're familiar with the individual results because it's working with the same results 
informing that data you see live in the TV. Okay, so that's just the start point. I just wanted to get us all on the, the same page. So practically, how do you actually create a team on the system? Good news, there's a button. Usually the, the answer in Shadow Match is there's a button for it that has that name. So I'm working in this file. Let's say I want to create a team with the, the 13 individuals for argument's sake on my screen. I can simply select them by clicking on the tick mark next to their name. And then this button here, the three little dots, open up my actions button. That's my go-to button, most probably for what I want to do. And now I'm looking for a button that looks like something that would make sense for me. Oh, great. Create team or add to team. If I click on this, it gives me the option to then either create a team. In other words, the individuals I've selected, I'm now creating a team combining their results. And obviously, as the button said, I have the option to then add it to an existing team. So if I have done this before, I have selected results, I've added them to a team, the bottom drop down list will show me all of the teams I've created in my file. And I have that option to then add all of these people to that file. Today, let's see what happens if we say create a team. So these 13 people selected, I simply click on create team. And now I can give the team a name. Now, as always in the system webinar, I'm showing you a basic use of this to say, okay, this is an example of this, but you should create the teams according to your needs in your organization, be it a project team with individuals across the board. Some people may be in sales, some people in finance, some people in management. You can select any grouping of individuals. And the moment they're in your selection basket there on the left, as soon as you have everybody, you can then click on this button and say create a team. I'm just using a simple example today to say they were all in the same file and created them together, but you can literally combine any results in a company and put it together. Even everybody, if you want to create a team with all of the employees in, a, in an environment, you can. Today, we're just looking at this. So let's just call it the demo team because we're busy with a demo of the, the team functionality. And now you can say, okay, listen, where do I want this team to sit on the system? Usually the default settings that the system populates there makes the most sense. So you actually just have to worry about what is the name of this team? And now we have two options here. If you click this button, it's gonna create the team and then deselect those individuals. They're not gonna be in your basket anymore. In other words, this is all you wanted to do with it. You just wanted to add them to a team. Or this option says, okay, create the team, but keep them in that basket. I might be doing something else with them. Today, all we're doing is we're creating the team so we can say create and unmark. So did you see my left little, little box there went away? And now all of these individuals are in the team format on the screen. Okay, so that's how we create a team. It's actually very easy. Select the individuals, click on the button that says create a team. I gave it a name and now I see it on my screen. Where do I find my teams once they have been created? For this, I'm just going to go back to our home screen. We can deselect this individual. And if I'm on this view, as you know, these are my different files or sub entities or departments where the results are. You'll see nothing here says team. It's all, it's all my functions that I've created. The teams are actually in a specific section that we group them all together. And it's in your top main menu here. You see if you hover over it, it shows me that icon there and it says show teams. So if I click on teams, now it opens up a list of all of the teams created in my entity. So they're all together there in my team uh, format. Now you see these two teams, the one that has been created before, the one I've just created. And the more teams I add, the more will be on this list. And if this list starts getting quite, quite long, there's nice filter options with this to say only show me the teams in this specific area. But luckily, we only have two teams today to look at. So it's nice and easy and, and quick. You can always edit the team. So if you want to give it a name, you can click on the edit and you can update the team. Let's say it was project team and now it should be project team B. You can update it there or you can delete the team if it's no longer applicable. So simply click on the delete option and that team would be away. For today, let's work with the project team. Let's not delete it, let's not edit it, let's click it and actually unpack the, de the detail we see on the screen. So what I'm looking at is the com 
find results of these individuals on the left. So you see there's 15 individuals selected here. And this graph here is the collective team graph of all of them together. Each individual contributes equally. So it doesn't give the manager of the team uh, a veto right to say, I've, I give, you know, I have more weight in this team. It simply has the view to say these individuals, as it is in real life, if they were working together with their unique habits, what would the team dynamic be? And it's shown visually on the screen. So a few things that help you to interpret this graph. The first one is your intensity ranges. If I open this up on the left, it helps me to interpret the graph to see, okay, what does it mean if a specific data point, a point like this, falls into a specific category? Now, similar to the personal graph we looked at at the start of the point, there's specific categories. And this is linked to the intensity of that habit to say, but how strong is that pattern embedded? How frequently does it occur for the individual or for the team? So you'll see nice and interactive, nothing I'm showing here is not going to show on your side. This will exactly the same thing will happen if you hover over it. So you don't have to memorize this off by heart. You're welcome to, when you need the data, simply hover over it and see that definition as you need it. But basically each of these little circles, that gray circle in the, in the center and the closer we go to the outside represents a specific category. Let's just take a look at a few. So the very, very inner circle, there you see there's a heading to say behaviors that the, the team will reject. So in this case, the system picked up, listen, there's actually not a pattern for the specific habit or behavior for the team. It's actually so soft or so, in, you know, so un, un, unavailable there that the team will actually reject it to say, no, 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 we, we're not comfortable with showing this behavior. Now, this would happen if that point there would be in that inner circle. Now, none of these points fall in that circle for the team. Individuals might have a point there if we look at the individuals, but for now we say, okay, they're not in that category. And the more I work to the outside, the stronger and stronger that pattern is embedded. So the next category you'll see is behaviors that are absent in the team. They're sort of neither here nor there, not necessarily a strong embedded pattern there, but they're a bit stronger than the rejected behavior. And off we go, off we go. The next category is when it's necessary behavior. And then we get to our contextual or collective everyday behavior, comfortable, automated habits, and even stronger, our defined differentiating behaviors. And then the very outside is the defining habits, similar to our radical habits in the, the individual graph. Okay, so you see, we didn't take a look and read everything in detail because you have that on your system. I just wanted to show you the feeling of this to say, interpret the graph, the closer to the center, the softer that habit is, the closer to the outside, the stronger it's embedded and the more prominent or stronger that habit or behavior would be for the team. That's how we interpret the graph. What does the graph show? What is the specific constructs that is shown in this graph? It's all of the headings here on the side of the graph. And you'll see also interactive, it shows you the definition if you hover over this. And these headings here, they are informed by the individual graphs that we looked at at the start. So the individual habits, the ones you're familiar with, propensity to own, responsiveness, resilience, they all packaged together in algorithms to give you these constructs to say, okay, but let's look at this element for a team and it's informed by the unique habits for the team informing that. So let's just take a look at a few examples. For instance, here we have at the one side, we have being quick and efficient on the one side of our graph. And if you go to the opposite, you would see an opposite type of behavior. And here we have accuracy with attention to detail. So it's what is driving the team here? Is it the pace? Is it the quick and efficiency? So everything to do with time? Or is it the accuracy to say, but it should be done with detail, accurate, and all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So these are the constructs shown by the graph. And then the data points at the top would represent the intensity of this construct. So in other words, you would then interpret this specific line for the team, for instance, to say, okay, on the element for being quick and efficient, that data point, where does it fall? Oh, it falls into our category of everyday contextual behaviors. 
we saw that on our data uh, in our intensity ranges. So it's in this broad band here. So it's an everyday comfortable behavior connectively for the team. They can show this comfortably in their everyday happenings and goings on in the job. And then at the other side of the coin, what do we have? Accuracy of attention to detail, also an everyday contextual behavior. Now, with Shadow Match, you also know we don't work with boxes and, and it has to be in this box or that box. It can be any combination of anything. So for some teams, they might be a very strong pool to the one side where they might have a very radical pool to the one, say the quick and efficiency, and the other one is softer. To, in some teams, both of them might be very strong. In some teams, both of them might be very soft. So any combination of this is possible. Good news is the system does the interpretation for you. So you don't have to worry about getting that accurate. The system would show you this. Okay, so these are the, the elements on this side. And as you said at the start, this gray graph here is the collective view representing the entire team dynamic. So where does the team collectively fall on each of these aspects is shown in this gray graph here. So if you just take a quick glance, we can say the most prominent aspect here for the team is that maintaining the known, you see this is the furthest to the outside. So collectively they driving this the strongest, it's a defining behavior there for the team. And at the opposite, you see the change is then a bit softer there, only when it's necessary, the team collectively will pull to the change side, they would rather pull to this side. Now, good news is there's a report that explains all of this if you pull this down, and there's a great option to have a team facilitation to unpack this. Today, I just want to explain to you how you work with the function on the system. So this is just our, our overview of this. So we unpack what does this gray graph here mean, and now we're going back to our headings on the side. So as we see all of them, nice, have the definition there. All of them is a specific Construct task and material preference versus people preference and, and, and. Two of them, however, work a bit differently. And I wanna take a moment to pause on them and unpack them in detail. So the two I'm referring here is the bold behavior and the soft behavior. So what happens here is the system says, if the team, all of the team members in this team graph, so all 15 of them here on the left, for argument's sake, had one bar graph with the individual habits that we looked at at the start. It's asking which of these habits are the five strongest individual habits and which of these habits are the five individual softest habits. So it's not saying, is this team a bold type of team or a soft type of team? So it's nothing about the culture or anything like that. It's purely saying which habits individually are the strongest collectively for this team and the strongest soft or the softest collectively for this team so in other words you see if i hover over this more detail appears and it shows me the okay what are these so collectively for the team the five individual habits that are driven or or embedded the strongest and they ranked from the top to the strongest and then a bit softer a bit softer is discipline conflict handling, altruism, people positive, team inclination. So imagine that team graph in your head, those five graphs would have been the strongest for the team collectively. Now, obviously this would be completely different for a next team and a next team and a next team that would be unique to each team. And there isn't a right or wrong answer here as well. This is very interesting to see collectively what's happening here. And if, what's happening in the back end is all of these individuals their bar graphs, all of the individual results. It's picking up like about which ones are embedded to the strongest extent across the board for the team. And it gives you the list there. Now, the second element to this is, but how strong? Because for one individual, if you refer to a, a, a habit in the middle there, they would say, oh, that's a very strong habit for them because collectively all of their habits might be softer. And for another individual, if you say the habit is there, they would say, no, it's a soft habit because all of their habits are very strong. So remember that relativity to it. And the good news is the system shows you where it is. So you don't have to worry to interpret it. Where do I find this result is by looking at where that point is in the spectrum here. So for one, for this team specifically, the strongest habits out of all of the habits falls into the everyday contextual behavior. 
So collectively still contextual habits, it's not radical habits, it's not embedded immensely, immensely strong, it's embedded to a comfortable contextual result. For another team, that point they might be in that very extreme category to say, but it's embedded very strongly, it's defining, it's definitely going to be there. So you, you interpret the two aspects of it. Firstly, what are the habits? And then how strong are these specific habits? Okay, so that's your bold behavior is the one side of the coin. And how you interpret this is to say, if the team is allowed to show these behaviors, you're empowering the team because there's a collective drive towards these behaviors, a comfortableness around these behaviors throughout the team. So empowering the team by allowing these behaviors or habits room to live. How do you frustrate the team by boxing them in to say, no, 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 we can't, we can't show this behavior here because now you're going to frustrate the team because that habit is, impact, is embedded and it needs that room. So these are my stronger ones. Let's go to the other side of the coin. So completely the other side of the graph. Now we go to the soft behaviors. So what does the team show, the graph show us here? Is if we had one bar graph for the entire team together, which of the individual habits on that graph are the five softest behaviors? So collectively driven to the softest extent. Here we have the list again. Once again, it's ranked. So the top one is the softest habits out of all habit out of all the habits, and then a bit stronger, bit stronger, bit stronger. So collectively for the team, individual inclination is the softest habit. Then propensity to change, innovation, propensity to hand off to simplify. So nice, there's the detail. But remember, we have to look at the second element, and that is, but how soft is soft for this team? And now I see that data point D is in our necessary band. So it's not soft, 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 where we reject this behavior. It's in the necessary category to say, when it's needed to show this behavior, fair enough, we'll do if it's necessary. But we're not going to put up a hand and say, yes, 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 please ask us to show this behavior because collectively it's embedded to a softer extent. Okay, so I know that was quite detailed, but do you see that specific element, how much detail and value is in those two data points? So I don't want you to misinterpret that and miss the value of it. So as we said, with the bold behaviors, we're empowering the team if we allow this. And the softer behaviors, we know, listen, this isn't necessarily the cup of tea for our team. So we don't need to show the focus on these behaviors day in and day out because it might start fatiguing the team because we're not so fit to show this habits collectively. It's embedded to a soft extent. So let's rather shift the focus to our bold behaviors for arguments. Now that was very nice to see the collective of the team, but this function allows you to then compare any of the individual team members to this view of the collective graph. So if I select someone here on the left, let's select Sophia, for instance. The red on the screen, that red graph there, is the individual's unique habits, and the gray will remain there always to say that is the collective of the graph. Now, do you see here what I refer to by there's a difference between bold behaviors in that category and bold behaviors in the a, in a next category, for instance. So for this individual, you would see, okay, that specific point on accuracy of attention to detail, where is it? It's in a defined line and the, the quick and efficiency also in the defined category. So there's a difference how this manifests versus how the team collectively manifests it. Let's look at her bold behaviors. The same thing would happen is if I hover over that, I have that list and it would show me for the individual, the five strongest habits listed from the highest to the softest. And that second element is, but how bold, how strong are these bold behaviors for this individual? Bold, definitely bold, strong habits, maybe even radical habits. So now we see, okay, for her, responsiveness, resilience, innovation, self-confidence, propensity to own are the five strongest habits. Off we go. On the opposite, you see for this individual, those soft behaviors, that's for the team, for the individual, you see for her, even the softest habits are very high contextual habits. So the individual, in other words, don't have soft, soft, soft plan behaviors. She actually has very strong habits across the board. And there they are listed, propensity to handle team inclination and, and, and. I just want to keep that open for a moment. If you had an eye for detail, you would have seen some of the habits listed there are bold. It's in a different font. And some of them are, are a bit smaller or, the, or standard font. 
Now what happens here is if the individual would share one of these individual habits as a soft behavior with the collective team, it would highlight it for you. So what I mean by this is look at propensity to handoff, propensity to change and individual inclination. All of them are bold. And if I just quickly view my team again, ah, now I see because propensity to change, propensity to handoff are also here. So it's immediately showing you that interpretation to say comparing the team's softest habits to the individual softest habits. Is there interesting uh, a correlation? Yes, for this individual, those three are shared. The other two team inclination and routine is not shared by the team as a soft behavior, only the individual has it as a soft behavior. Okay, so it would always show you that easily. And now let's just quickly open up a few different individuals here on the team that you can see how this team graph becomes valuable for someone working with this data. If you look at the three unique individuals on the screen, the blue, the green, and the red, these are individual habit preferences manifesting every day in the working environment. Some individuals have a very strong pull for certain behaviors. Some individuals have a softer inclination for certain behaviors. If I, as the manager of this team, is informed with this information, imagine how bespoke and, and unique and specific I can empower them in my team to say, I know for this individual, this is a preference. The being quick and efficient, it's, it's a habit that is radical. So, I'm going to frustrate this individual by unnecessarily delaying feedback to him or her when she when she asks me for information. So if I know this about this, oh great, I can manage that proactively. And that individual has that feeling of, yes, I am being supported in that environment. Versus another individual to say, listen, for this individual, what are the specific behaviors that are more comfortable with the tasks that you allocate to that individual would align to what they naturally want to do? All of the results are actually on the screen. So it gives you immense valuable data on the screen. And it's actually just a little blue line there that you might have never clicked on. So let's just get back to our overall view. What this, uh, the team functionality allows you to do is it allows you to see the collective view of the entire team. It allows you to compare individuals to that collective team to see what are their unique habits compared to the team or as an individual for any reason you might want to do this, to understand the team, to allocate roles in the team, even for recruitment to say, if I'm bringing in a new team member, who should I add to this team? So you can compare any results in the team format and it would be shown like this on the screen. If you're using this for recruitment, it's a very nice option to say, keep all of your candidates close by and put them into the team one by one. What do I mean by this? Let's say, Amy, Barry, Dawn, and Don. These are four candidates you are considering including in the team. I can select them and use this button here at the, top, at the bottom and say, it's, I, want, I want to use them, but just, just hold on for one moment. Just exclude them quickly. Just, just put them close by, but don't make them part of the, the team here. So I'm going to use this option here to say exclude from the calculation. And you'll see now what happens is they listed here at the bottom as individuals on standby. So in other words, you're telling the system, listen, I'm probably going to use this result very soon in this team graph, but I first want to see the graph without them contributing to the calculation. Because remember at the start, I said all of the team members contribute equally to it. So you want to replicate what's actually going to happen in real life. In real life, these are the individuals that are currently working in the team. I'm then considering to bring in candidate A. Let's put candidate A back in our team. We say that individual, yes, put her back, make her part of their calculation. So this option here. And now what I'm seeing is how would this team function? What would the, the categories be if that individual were to be part of the team? So I can't even remember what was, the, it was Amy. This is, this is then the candidate that I put back into the team and I can say, okay, candidate, how does she compare to the team? Okay, very similar on these points, bit of a difference here, a bit of a strong extent. So you can see all of the detail and it was quick and easy to put it back. Let's take it out again to say, okay, let's go look at our next candidate. So I'm excluding that candidate again. And let's go and just select another one. Let's say Barry. And now I'm doing the same. I'm including her. 
So once again, just a simple scenario for you to say, use the buttons and the functionalities of this application according to what you actually want to learn from the data. In my scenario, I said I have two candidates or four candidates that I'm considering to include in the team. I'm including them one by one, and I'm taking a short step through the system. I'm not creating four different teams, each sales team and Barry, sales team and Amy. I'm using my team functionality and using that button very effectively to say, either include in the calculation or exclude from the calculation. Use it according to your needs. The option is there. Okay, so let's just check. We looked at the team list, the collective graph. Okay, we just need to unpack the team strength for a moment as well. You would have noticed there's a specific color at the outside rim of this team. And at the very bottom, there's a team strength indicator here that says, functional when necessary at this case. So what the system here does is it makes a comment on the congruency of the different habits in these specific team members combined. If the team strength were to be strong or very strong, the comment would say, but there's a, a similarity in the, the habits that the Habits are so close together that if you forced all of these individuals into very close quarters, they had to work together every day side by side, it would be easier. There's, you know, the, there's a very synergistic or collective view in the, in the habits. What it says when it's like this functional when necessary, it's saying there's a bit of a wider distribution with the unique habits. So if they need to come together, maybe in a, in a meeting, Meeting, a touch base session, perfect, functional and necessary, the behaviors can operate very effectively towards success. But if you're going to force these unique behaviors into very close quarters where we need to work side by side, very, very closely on the same thing every day, day in and day out, that difference might be, be starting to create conflict. What do I mean by this? Let's quickly select all of this. If we have a distribution on a specific habit, let's say something like the accuracy with attention to detail. If this individual and that individual needs to get together around that point every now and again in a, in a monthly touch base session, it's fine. It's, it's okay. We can, we, we can understand or we can communicate this, this effectively between each other. But what if I make the, these two individuals partners in a project? And day in and day out, they need to work on the same report. So Terry can't do something before Sophia has done it, and Sophia can't do something before Terry's done it. Now that difference becomes a bit more intense. Now it's, listen, if we don't understand this difference, we're going to create conflict and misunderstandings. So the team strength collectively comments on that to say, okay, but if your habits are closer together, the chances of conflict is less, if you need to work side by side, and if your, your habits are distributed more all over the place, the chances of conflicts in close quarters are higher. Now, the team strength doesn't have to be strong. It doesn't have to be very strong for the team to be effective. The performance of the team sits outside the system. You know if the team is performing or not. So this can be a completely functioning, performing, excellent team or this can be a poor performing team. It depends on the outside, the performance. You then learn from the system to say, okay, oh, my functioning team, great. Here we have the correct combination, all of the diverse habits, perfect. Or my, my team that's struggling a bit, here we have this combination, let's see how we can interpret it. So yeah, that's, that's just a comment there on that team strength there. It would show you what is the team strength of the specific team. It's also explained in the team report once you download it from the system. Okay, let's move on to our next view. Now the system gives you an option to look at subgroups or specific little sections in the team. So you'll see there's seven uh, little blocks there on the screen. And now our team strength indicators here again, you see on the left, we have that very strong, strong, functional when necessary. So again, this is going to come into play. And these specific subgroups then have individuals in that team. So what happens in the back end of the system is, the system says the specific individuals whose habits naturally would fulfill this function. Who are they? There's specific cutoff points for me to be part of the action and task group. I have to have, for instance, a 
strong habit in to simplify and my my task efficiency needs to be above a specific point so specific algorithms informing that specific function for you to say naturally who fulfills this role within the team and if you click on it or hover over it you would see the name of the individuals or individuals in that subgroup so on the screen we're look, currently looking at the action and task group on the left, we can see Sophia is the individual that fulfills that role within the team naturally. And there's a nice explanation showing you what do we mean by the action and task group. Now, if you see the colors on the screen, you know, okay, there's more information here. Let's unpack this. The people's group, we have seven individuals in this. All of these individuals, their unique habits say, yes, they fulfill this role within the team. They're part of the people's subgroup but it's highlighting it as orange collectively, that's strength. So what happens here is those seven individuals, they all have the habits to be part of this subgroup here, but the rest of their habits aren't so close together. So they're not completely aligned with other habits. Where if it's green, it's commenting that there's a closer synergy to this, for instance, our anchor group. So these four individuals, they Jennifer, Michelle, Jeff, and Barry, have similar habits to be in that anchor group. So all, they're all the anchor group for this team. And even the other habits are also very similar. So across the board, there's a close synergy between this. That's why that strength is very strong, very strong in this. So let's go back to our team graph to see this visually. So who do we have? Jennifer, Michelle, Jeff, and Barry. Let's just take a quick graph at our, a quick look at our graph. And we click on Jennifer. Michelle, Jeff, do you see how close that is to that collective team graph and how close they are to each other? So that's why that comment was made on your subgroups to say there's a very strong team strength in this. Back to our group overview, let's go and unpack that further. So this would then highlight, okay, which of the individuals who fulfill this role naturally within the team? And that second comment is collectively in that subgroup how strong is the synergy between the unique behaviors, but all of this shown very nicely on the report. Where is the report? If you click on group details, it shows you everything written. So all of the, the detail you want to see there. And if you click on download here, there's a nice option to download the report and you have it as a PDF. And with the team graph, there's a very nice option to email. And now you have two options. You can either email the team graph to all of the individual team members. So if you select on this option, it would give each of the unique team members their own graph over the entire team, group, team uh, graph with all of the detail. And there's a nice option to say, send a consolidated report with all of the individuals, so all of the graphs together to the manager, for instance. That's a great graph to send to the manager to see the entire view of this because everybody's results will be on that graph. So you have the option, use them once again, as is needed for you. So here you can send it to all of the team members. Here you can send the consolidated graph and include anybody in that day, even if CC'd email, if you would need that. Okay, so that's downloading the graph, sending that, sending that email to it. I think we've touched on everything. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything out. Yes, we've touched on all the functions. The last thing I want to mention is the team facilitation that I that I quickly touched on earlier. So there's a step-by-step -step way to actually interpret this graph, that it follows a logical sequence to say, let the individuals in the team understand their personal habits. To understand their personal habits, let them understand how to interpret this team graph and then unpack the unique team graph for that team. So if you as a system administrator would like to do that, you can. You can then ask your consultant to say, help me to unpack the full value out of this function that I can facilitate that with, own, with individual teams within my own organization. If you're not comfortable enough to do that yet, you're welcome to ask your consultant to do the team facilitation on your behalf. They would then ask the facilitation fee for that session to say, okay, I'm having, we have a live or a virtual session unpacking the team results. If you don't have, if your consultant isn't available, you're also welcome to ask the Shadowmatch head office. From the Shadowmatch head office side, we facilitate team feedback sessions. We facilitate them either face-to-face -face 
either virtually everybody on the screen live, or we can do a pre-recording where we interpret everything and everybody receives a link to the recording where the detail is unpacked. Choose the option that works the best for you, but your first point of contact would always be your supporting consultant to help you to go through this and get the full value out of this functionality. Okay, that concludes our, our walk through the team functionality. The last thing I just want to show you is the newsletter quiz that you don't miss the opportunity. So we have a newsletter that goes out every second month and we've recently introduced a quiz opportunity for the users and there's always a great prize. So the prize in this quiz is a take a lot voucher. Now everybody can do a take a lot voucher because you can choose anything you want to buy then. Um, so where do you find the newsletter? Is If you go to shadowmatch.com, that's our information website, on the resources, there's a tab for newsletters. I've just opened it up before the session and I'm looking at the main newsletter. And if I scroll down, you would see we've, in, we've announced the winner of the previous quiz. So great, the winner and the prize they, they receive. If you scroll down a bit, here you can access the current quiz. Now the deadline for this quiz is this Friday. So if you don't want to miss this opportunity, make sure you complete the quiz before Friday. And then you are part of the, the individuals that go into the random selector where we say the people that all completed the quiz and got 100%, they're all put into a basket and we then randomly select a name and that would be the winner of the great voucher. Okay, so that's just a, a little the opportunity that you shouldn't miss out on. So on the, the .com, on the resources, on the, your newsletters, you would find the link to the course. Thanks, Lizette. That concludes my side. I'm just going to stop sharing and hand back to you. Thank you very much, Suzani. Thank you. That was a very thorough walkthrough, and I think it was very well explained. I think those of you that have not seen the team functionality before, you will definitely now feel that you understand it better. Um, I think a uh, last few comments just to um, elaborate and to highlight again, um, as Suzani said, you as a user, you are welcome to use the team functionality. There's no extra cost to using that functionality. Once you've got the individuals on your shadow match system, you merely go, you select them and you create the team and you've got the data. If you want to use your supporting consultant to do a facilitation, then as Suzanne rightly said, there will be a facilitation fee and they can quote you on that facilitation fee. And then the third option is really to just have a, your team uh, um, your team analysis recorded. So in other words, if you let your supporting consultant or us at head office know, listen, this is my team and I would like to have a recording of my team graph and the individual interpretation of all the results in the team. There's also a fee to that because we then do a recording. We send you the recording and together with your team, you can sit and listen to the recording and understand the dynamics of your team. Um, then Please remember, dear, dear participants, that this team functionality can be used for any team. We have done sports teams, exco teams, functional teams, technical teams. So you can really, wherever people work together as a team, you can really make use of this team functionality to analyze the team and to inform the team of how they can, uh, can um, um, work together and what they can, can um, expect from one another with regards to the natural and the, the, the behaviors and their habits. So this can be used for any team. And then lastly, before I handle one of the questions and then um, open the floor for other questions, just for the international people joining today, um, I know you don't have take a lot. There's a, there will obviously then be a different voucher, but the, the, the prize for the quiz this time around is a voucher and we have taken the, our international clients and consultants into consideration. So in South Africa, you'll get a take a lot voucher, but if you are in an international client or consultant and you do win, then there's a different voucher. You will then get an Amazon voucher. And there was one question that I would like to just handle, Suzanne, and then we'll open the floor. Um, please explain. So, so somebody asked a question about the cautious group. So guys, um, Suzanne showed the group overview. And maybe you can just share your screen if you don't mind, Suzanne, and just show the group overview again so that I just um, answer the question and then we'll open the floor for more questions. So with regards to the different subgroups, you would have seen that there are seven subgroups. 
So we have the anchor group and the anchor group that those are the people that are really the glue of, of holding the team together. And those are the people that bring harmony. And they are normally those people in the team that everybody feels comfortable with and that people will run to if they really have a problem and they don't want to approach the manager. These people are, they are the glue. Then you've got the people's group, the action and task group, problem solvers, the adventure and change. And I just want to quickly say something about the independent group. So the independent group, these are people that they don't work with the group, but they normally work for the group. So those are people that they can see the wood from the trees and they, they, they in most instances, prefer to not be part of the team all the time, but to really take a bird's eye view and to inform the team. And, and obviously when you do a team session, this will be explained in more detail. What I want to get to, because this is what the question is related to, is the cautious group. So guys, the cautious group, those are the people in the team. That's your handbrake in the team. Or those are normally the individuals that will raise a red flag. They always see the risks. And these people are important in a team because they are cautious. They approach things in a very cautious manner. And those are the ones that are risk averse. And they will say, wait a minute, before we take this bold step, what about X, Y, and Z? Now, to fall into the cautious group, you need to have certain habits at a certain intensity. So there's obviously an algorithm at the back of this entire system that looks at the habits of the entire team. And then it says, who of these individuals in the team meet the requirements to fall into the cautious group? It's very important to understand that the cautious group is not informed by the soft habits on your team view. Those are two completely separate things. So Suzanne, if you go back to the team graph, um, you will see that we've got soft habits, soft behavior. The soft behavior and the cautious group are two completely separate things. They are not integrated. So the system does not look at the soft behaviors and then decides, oh, who needs to be in the cautious group? No. The soft behaviors are merely, if we had to put the team in a bar graph, like the personal report graph, the system says for this team, which are collectively the five softest habits. The cautious group, on the other hand, has got completely different habits that people need to qualify with a certain cutoff intensity to fall into the cautious group. So it's important, dear participants, not to mix the two. They are completely separate. The one does not inform the other. So I hope that answered the question. I think what we'll do now, I'm just going to check. There's no other question. I don't know if you want to make a last comment, Suzanne. And in the meantime, I will then just enable the setting if there's anything else. Great. Let me see. Uh, no other questions. So I'm going to enable the setting. Great. Dear participants, you have the ability to now unmute your microphone. So if you have any other questions, please feel free. This is now your time to ask the question. Um, and if there's anything that's still unclear, you're welcome. Paul, you're welcome. I see you've switched on your video, so you're welcome to go ahead. Yeah, uh, similar to the question just now, I had a group the other day with some of the CEOs of an organization are in that cautious group. And they, they almost differed with me. And they said, we're not that cautious, but I see we in the group because we have to lead the company. So I, I was, and hence, you know, some of these questions around this. Is it possible to say which habits are used in that algorithm, but just so that I can and put them to rest? Because they're good CEOs, it's a great company, there's good engagement there, but they were just said, you know, why are three of us in this sort of area? Because some of us are, are, are cautious, but we're actually driving forward. It's, it's difficult to answer them. Um, Paul, it's not easy for me to mention those habits because they are very, um, in, uh, it's very complicated algorithms. I'll have to go into the back end to go and see what habits inform that specific group. So I will have to take this offline and get back to you. But what I can say is that people are very often not that much in touch with how they lead and how they manage a business. So the fact that they are taking the business forward does not mean that they're not cautious. And it might be because they are cautious that they have taken the business to the point where the business is now. So it all needs to be seen in context. So, you know, if they were not that cautious and nobody in that exco was cautious, they might not have been where they are now and they might not have had a business anymore. So I think 
That's what Susani said right at the beginning. There's no right and wrong. And people need to understand that there's a role for each of those groups. And we very, of, very often when we do a team session and there's nobody in the cautious group, we would actually suggest to that exco team or team that listen guys there's nobody in the cautious group and this is a challenge because there's nobody that's got the natural behavior patterns to see risk and to be cautious and to not just be a maverick and take bold steps and regret it later so i think the important thing for those see for that for that group of ceos is to, for them to understand that the fact that they are cautious in their environment in their context is probably their saving grace. And the cautiousness, depending on what their type of business is, might it, it help them to lead the business to the next level? Yes, if they were not that cautious, they and, and obviously they might not have been where they wanted to be or where they are now, but they might not have been anywhere if they were not cautious. So I think the most important thing to answer a question like that is, guys, there's no right and wrong. And let's look at the positive side. The fact that you are cautious is making you taking um, calculated risks and calculated decisions. And that's great in your context, in your environment. And keep in mind that if, that, if, they, if they are included in a different team, they might not be in the cautious group because it's dynamic and it's not static. So I hope that answered your question. Um, and I'll, I will obviously get back to you with regards to, to how it's calculated. It's not things that we just publish because it's also part of the IP of the system, but I can give you some indication of, of what of the habits. And, and keep in mind, Paul, that even if, if I can give you the list of habits that contribute to the cautious group, sometimes the cutoff point is 41 points. And that individual scored 40 points. So now they left out of the group. Or the cutoff is 42 and they scored 42. So they really just made it into that group. So that's also important to take into account. There must be a cutoff point. With anything in life, there's a cutoff point. So you either fall in or you fall out. Okay, great. Let's see if there are other questions. Susanna, I don't know if you want to add to that answer that I gave. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Lizette. Yo, I'd just like to comment on the the comment we've been saying the whole time to say there isn't a right or wrong we've also experienced the question where someone would ask but what does the perfect or the ideal team look like where is the distribution in the subgroups how many individuals do we need here how many do we need there and the answer is the the perfect team for what for to go to the moon to manage a small country to manage a school to be the exco of a financial institution so just as dynamic as the outcomes of teams are so dynamic are the teams that fulfill that role so the question again the same as what we said is the team strength is the system isn't telling you if this is a good or a bad team the system shows you the unique dynamics of the behaviors within the team you're informed of this information to empower the team to then be successful if they weren't successful, if they were successful, to continue to be successful and go to that next level. So there isn't an ideal place for the CEO to be. We can't say the CEO should be in this subgroup because the CEO of this company and the CEO of that company is a completely different environment. So it's, again, the unique context of that specific company. If the CEO knows in which subgroup he or she falls, then they are informed to say, but listen, now I know where I fall naturally in the subgroup, which role do I fulfill? How does that either empower me or how is that confusing what I need to do? And now that I can be aware of this, I can actively manage that to say, listen, if I'm in the cautious group, like the individuals you mentioned, great. This is one of the things I bring to the table. It's one of the strengths I have as a CEO or as a team member in this. So I need to make sure if I get that feeling that we're approaching a risk uncalculated and we didn't think about it, I should voice it because I'm the person that's supposed to voice it. I fulfill that role. So yeah, so that's just a, a little, little summary comment to say the same as with the habits, the team graph, the subgroup, there isn't a right or wrong ideal little recipe because humans and individuals are way more interesting than that. So the system allows us to actually fulfill the interesting, dynamic, unique individuals that we are. Okay, thanks, Lizzie. Can I, can I just comment something? Because while you're talking, I'm just actually looking at a, a company example. 
And believe it, it's the debtors group. Everyone is in the cautious group. There are only four people in the team. They're all cautious. And one of the challenges the debtors have is that they're not claiming money. They, you know, they're unable to do that. And, and I can see clearly there's no one in the you know, sort of the action and adventure group because they need to drive it. But they are so cautious that they don't want to change the system and that they're almost being so cautious they're not taking a risk. So when you were talking, we were saying perhaps you should incentivize these guys with some form of bonus that it stretches them a little bit in terms of that. But I was just you know, testing it now because I, you can understand exactly to that the cautious group. You, know, you understand, and I think in finance as well, you want a lot of cautious people there as well. But perhaps in business development, you want a little bit more adventurous. So yeah, thank you. Very, very useful. Thanks, Paul. Um, and thanks for that comment. I think the important thing is you don't, you're don't you not always in a position to change the team. And as we all know, habits don't change by making a decision or giving somebody an instruction. But in that case of the debtors, it will be a good idea for them to, as an agenda point in their meeting, say, okay, but what risks are we going to take this week? What adventurous, what, what adventurous thing are we going to do? Which of the policies are we going to try and revamp so that they force themselves to think a bit out of the box? Um, what Susani said is very important. What you see with a team needs to inform the team's strategy and how they operate. And if they are not functional or successful, the team graph will show them why. I'll quickly share a case study. We did a team in one of the big five consulting companies and that specific was a project team. And that specific project team had been busy with a project for 18 months and they've made no progress. They've had meetings once a week and 18 months later, there was no progress. So we made them all do shadow match and we created the team graph. And when we looked at the subgroups, they had nobody in the action and task group. And when they saw that, they said, hey, but that's our problem. We meet and we meet and we meet and we half of us are in the cautious group. The other half is in the people's group and nobody's in the task, action and task group. So we worry about what people's going to say. We worry about all the risks and nobody takes action. So they immediately saw the picture and they said, OK, we need to change this. So it, it informs you to help you build the team and build the culture to what you want it to be. Not by changing people, but by making people take up their role and live up to their natural behavior patterns within that specific team. Great, let's see, we got about three minutes to go. Any other questions or comments? I'll give it another round. You can just switch on your video or your microphone. Whilst we're waiting, please remember, you're also welcome to send us an email to info at shadowmatch.com. Um, if you are not 100% sure who your supporting consultant is, we can put you in touch with your consultant. So you can also then let us know and we can put you in touch with your consultant, especially if you would like to do a team session in your own business or with specific teams that you are aware of. I think on that note, Susani, we can conclude. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. It was great seeing you again. Please remember, first Wednesday of every month, it's our system webinar. We've got a lot of wonderful things still in stock to share with you. And please go to your calendars and watch the previous webinars so that you can really use the system to its full potential. All the best. Go well. And thanks for joining.